Hey guys, finally I found a solution to desolder components from motherboards without too much effort. And it's very affordable. I'm using a very basic desoldering sucker in combination with this 550 watt hot air gun. The hot air gun is only around $60 or $45 with a simpler version of the stand. Here are some photos of the desoldering success. We've got a four pin fan header. Here we have a coin cell battery holder, some electrolytic caps, and even the entire PS2 port came out quite easily. The hot air gun is from Fnersi. It is the SAG55 Intelligent 550 Watt Hot Air Gun. Disclosure, I got this one for free. I do get to keep it. And if you make a purchase using the link in the description, you get a discount and I get a small commission. The reason I struggled with desoldering in the past is because motherboards have multiple layers and the solder joints that connect to ground, well, they act like heat sinks, whisking away the heat and making desoldering very difficult. I have some footage here that shows exactly what's going on. I'm desoldering the four pin CPU fan header. The first three pins come out just fine. So this is without using the hot air gun just using the 30 watt desoldering sucker. But then we get to the last pin. This one is connected to ground and we can see it's putting up a fight. The ground planes are whisking away all the heat, acting like a heatsink. The solder doesn't melt and there's no chance to desolder this pin. And now I'm applying some additional heat with the left hand. I'm holding the hot air onto the area and with the right hand handling the solder sucker. It takes a bit of practice and I'm using a PCB holder to secure everything. But yeah, the solder is coming out nicely. I flip over the board and there you go. The four pin CPU header came out easily. I desoldered a ton of components to practice and dial in the right settings. I captured everything. But now let's take a closer look at this heat gun. In the box, we find the hot air gun and this one is compact. It doesn't come with a huge base station. The power supply is permanently attached to the hot air gun. I do like this because, well, we don't have another station that takes up place. On the flip side, it makes the gun a little bit heavier. It's around 200 grams, but for me, this wasn't an issue. The cable from the hot air gun going to the power brick is a little bit short, only 1.2 meters, but you can use any length of cable for the mains power. Here we have the stand. It's nice and heavy, weighing around 800 grams. It auto detects when you insert the heat gun and then switches to cold air, cooling it down, and eventually it will go into standby. On the side of the stand is a holder for nozzles. And if you look at the back of the stand, there is a mechanism that helps you remove the nozzle while the hot air gun is still hot. So you can quickly switch nozzles on the fly. The one that's included, it's a six millimeter size. The website mentions 850 series nozzles, so it should be easy to find replacements or nozzles of different sizes. Here we have a user manual and I do recommend to read it because this one uses buttons that you can click, double click and also long press to access additional features. To turn it on, long press the middle button and the same goes for switching it off. Long press the middle button and it will firstly switch into cooling down mode and then turn off. Pressing the middle button, you can switch between temperature and airflow mode and then use the left and right buttons to increase or decrease either the temperature or the airflow. You can go from 100 degrees to 40, 50 degrees. This is in Celsius. And you can also set the airflow from 1 to 20. There is a large button with an LED below. It's color coded to show the temperature, blue, green, yellow and red. Red means it's really hot and you can press it to switch between three presets. If you need cold air, long press this button. To access the menu with all the settings, you long press the middle button and there are quite a few things you can change. For example, the auto off time, you can have it heat up without having to press a button, which is sort of a security feature. You can 
change the unit or for the temperature, the steps of incrementing and uh, decrementing the temperature and so on. And now let's check out the soldering of that huge PS2 port. I really struggled so much in a previous video. It was a total disaster, very messy and I got a few comments from you that I should just quit. But guys, look, I've been doing this YouTube thing now for 11 years. I don't quit. Failing is how I learn and so I also got a lot of really good comments with useful tips and tricks. The PS2 port has a total of 12 smaller pins in the inside, 6 for the mouse and 6 for the keyboard and then there are larger pins on the outside, 5 of them. I might speed up this footage a little bit but well the small pins come first. Some of them are connected to ground but I really couldn't tell the difference. They're all coming out quite easily. Now on to the large pins. I wasn't sure if I should change the tip if it's big enough. I do have a few different sizes. So I just gave it a go. Let's see what happens. Instead of using circular motions like I usually do, here it's a little bit tight so I just twisted the desoldering sucker and look at that. The solder is coming out really nicely. Now looking at the footage now, maybe I should have gone over some of the pins a second time but with a little bit of wiggling, well the port comes out in one go. Nothing compared to how much I had to fight the last time. Sometimes the cable gets away a little bit but it's really not a big deal and I'm also in the market for buying an arm where I can attach the heat gun and use it for soldering because I only have two hands so I would need a third one. So I'm looking for an arm where I can mount the heat gun to blow some hot air on the pin and then I can do some soldering because well after you remove these components you have to solder new ones in of course. On the screen is some more footage of desoldering some other components. I ended up with a nice assortment of components of different sizes. Let's have a look at prices. There are two versions. If you want the version with the large stand like shown in the video you're looking at $60 but if you're happy to use a smaller version, this is called the basic stand, then the unit is only 45 USD and today I also have a discount coupon for you. You get a discount and I get a small commission. Now there are many other things you can do with such a hot air gun. I was really after the desoldering because replacing the caps on old motherboards and video cards, this is really what I'm after. But maybe in the future I'll give SMD soldering a go. It's something that has fascinated me, so why not? I think for $60 or $45 with the simple stand, you can't go wrong. This is a great tool to have in your toolbox. I will use it going forward, so you'll likely see this in future videos. So there's a bit of a long-term feedback as well. And now, as always, I would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts of using a hot air gun to help with the desoldering process, what is the method you are using and what other sort of tools and equipment should I be looking at leveling up in future videos. Leave a comment down below. That's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.